Hi everyone, Mrs Hickling here again, just to give you a little bit of information on how to use Seneca Learning, because I seem to be getting a lot of the same questions about it. So what I've got here for you is what you would see if you log into Seneca. Now, unfortunately, I can't help you with resetting your passwords. So if you have forgotten what your password is, please either use the I forgot my password section um, for it to send you an email reminder or re-sign up using your school um, email account. Now, when you log into Seneca, this is the screen that you would see. Now, for any assignments that you have been set, you would find them down in this section here. Now, as you go down, you've got all sorts of bits of your memories, any leaderboards that you're part of, and in particular, your memory palace, how much total learning time you've done, how many questions you've answered and what your knowledge score is. Obviously, mine's not that great at the moment, but you do have a list of assignments and when they're due. And there is one or two of them here if you're working through them. But in particular, I want to draw your attention to the bit at the top. At the top here, you've got home, courses and classes and assignments. If you click on classes and assignments, you will see your different classes, upcoming assignments and past assignments. Now, I know that some of you have missed previous Seneca assignments. So if you click on past assignments, what you will find are any assignments that you may have missed. And if you have been set these assignments, and there's even more if you click on the show more button, what you can do is you can click start learning and it takes you to the beginning. Now, many students have said, oh, I've already got the circles on this bit and this bit, so I don't need to do it again. That circle's complete. Well, actually you do, because over time, these circles will begin to reopen again. It shows how your knowledge actually begins to decay after a while, because if you don't keep retesting yourself, you will begin to forget the information. As you can see, my atomic structure knowledge has gone right down. So what you need to do is you need to click the start learning and work your way through. Now, you can have it with the typing speed there. You can change the typing speed. You can have it go slower, faster, or turn it off so all of the text appears in one go. So I'm just gonna speed my writing up a little bit. You need to look through the flashcards. You need to make sure you're reading and taking in the information. I've seen some students taking notes on this as well, which is really helpful to them. Each time, click continue. Again, you get different ways of looking at this knowledge, how things are connected to each other. And eventually it will give you a check section. Covalent bonding involves two atoms sharing one or more pairs of, hopefully I've got this right, electrons, fantastic. It gives me more questions. These questions change over time. So it learns what you do know and what you don't know. So you keep on going. And it's really, really important that you keep on going with this. And it does not register that you have completed it until you complete the full section. So if I decide I've had enough on this one and I want to go back, if I quit the session, it will actually lose my progress. It will not register that. So you must complete a section before you go back. So that's where you see past assignments. And especially if you want to go back and improve on anything. So for example, if I know I only got 65% on one of mine and I want to go back and do it again, that's where you can find it. Upcoming assignments are any assignments that are due soon. So here is one on atoms and radiation that will be due in 13 days time. So I could start learning that one. So this is where you find where all of your assignments are. And you can also see your classes. So you have the year 10 independent learning class. In here, you can see all of the courses you have been enrolled in. So it's not just for science, it's for all of them. Again, you can have a look at all of your assignments in here, the upcoming and the past assignments. You can also have a sneaky look at the leaderboards and we can see who is doing a really, really good job on here. Now, unfortunately, I haven't done anything for this in the last 24 hours, so I can't access that leaderboard. So it's important to have a little look. You can also see the settings here. 
and the settings, you only have the option to leave the class, which I really don't want you to do. So again, just as a reminder, classes and assignments, you have upcoming assignments and past assignments. Past assignments are for anything you have missed or anything you've completed, and upcoming is anything that is due soon, and it gives you a little reminder of when and what time that is due. I hope that's given you a little overview about Seneca, and as again, you do need to sometimes redo things you have already done because Seneca has this really clever algorithm. It learns from you. It learns what you do know and what you don't know. It learns what mistakes you make over and over again. So then it gives you the opportunity to correct that mistake. It tests you. The idea of Seneca is to really embed that deep learning to make sure that you don't forget simple things and it slowly makes the questions more and more difficult. So in fact, the more time you spend on Seneca repeating stuff, the harder it will get. But that's deliberate. And your Seneca will be different to your friend's Seneca because it learns from you. It will tailor an individual experience to you based on what you get right and what you get wrong. So it's really, really important to give this the best effort that you can. If you've got any more questions about Seneca, please don't hesitate to email me or send me a message through the Google Classrooms. But I hope that's given you a bit of a better insight into Seneca, how to access the assignments and the point of doing Seneca.